Hi, this is Sergeant Beast Larson. This video, I'm gonna talk about, just briefly, the power of inmate manipulation. In this power, um, our book, uh, Officer Perception, Surviving Danger, by Timothy Amdahl and myself, Steve Larson, we talk about the mind and the power, the games they play, how they try, inmates try and totally control you. And once they have that little bit, that little inch, you know, they're going to take more than a mile. They're going to take your life. They're going to take your livelihood, your family, your, your home. And this is what I mean. Uh, last night, my wife and I watched the Susan Smith story. Uh, if you remember back in the Carolinas uh, years ago, drove her, her van into the lake and drowned her two little children. When she got in into county jail and into prison, she immediately began to manipulate other inmates and the guards. And the big part of the story was the Captain Alfred Rowe. And it's, it's disgusting. I'm going to say this. I'm very disgusted. I'm upset. I'm mad. I'm pissed off. Here's a captain that transfers to a female correction facility. And out of his curiosity and, and other testosterone, he's married. But he goes and starts having communication with her through the door. Captains don't normally walk around having communication with people through the doorway. And allow inmates to have conversations with them whenever they want. Traveled all through Georgia on tax squad. We did searches. Had a captain at our place at Hayes. People come to the captain's office. He just doesn't go down and stand in front of the door and start talking to them. You know, sergeant lieutenants do that. Unit managers do that. Captain doesn't do that. And it didn't take very long for this married captain, a man of, of office and position, to find himself allowing her to flirt, to be suggestive sexually in conversation with him. As soon as she did that and he didn't shut it down, the very first sentence that was inappropriate, he was hooked. There was a recreation uh, activity when it was done in the gym. She found herself alone with him. She told him she needed to give him oral sex. He let her. That was it. She had him. Here's how much power and control she had over him. He went on vacation shortly after that. While he's on vacation with his family, phone starts blowing up. Hey, we need you at the office. We got this, this, and that going on. I'm not going to say the details on the video. That part's not important. When he gets back, what's important, they call him in and question him. He's, he's had. Because there's other witnesses that corroborate her story. She had some sexual relations with two, two of the guards that were close to her. One was the captain. He admitted he was charged, found guilty, probation, put on the lifetime sex offender registry. She had him. She ruined him as well as how she controlled the other. It's a great story to watch, the Susan Smith story, you know, and the guards that protected her. Watch that story. But here's my point. In our book, and I mentioned Officer Perception, Surviving Danger, we talk about the mind, how important the mind is that you have to not be controlled by inmates. <clears throat> now, let me mention another book here by my good friend, Anthony Ganji. Inmate Manipulation Decoded. It's on Amazon. It's available at Target. Like our book is. Inmate Manipulation Decoded. I had the privilege in conversations with him last year to be able to get a copy and read it before final draft. It's an incredible book. Now, he goes in great detail what, what we have not, Tim and I have not done, and I've not done on detail in my videos. I talk about manipulation. But Anthony's book, Inmate Manipulation Decoded, goes the whole process from the thought, the idea in the inmate's brain, how they formulate this, who they pick, how they target them, how they deliver that initial conversation, how they set that little hook. And you think it's like, oh, it's just a little thing. It's a conversation. But you have to shut them down every time there's something said to you that can lead. They're hooking a little bluegill and ending up with a shark. His book will explain that. I suggest everybody buy his book as well and read that. 
these two books, buy them and read them. You don't want to be caught up. You don't want to be caught up. Now some, it's not just catching them. You know, people that are life and they're looking for that hook to try and hurt the officer. How about the Tina Gonzalez story out of the county detention in California? This has been all over the news the last month. Having sex with inmates, you know, doing it in front of other people, having pants with holes in them for easy access. She was bringing in stuff too, having sex, doing everything. And I'm not going into detail on that. I'm sure she got paid uh, very well. That'll come out in her bank account when that records come out. Why? Why would people put their self in that? You know? A little bit of money for a, a month or two doing this however long. Then a lifetime in prison or years in prison. I worked in Georgia, three years minimum. That's not worth it, folks. But this is the power the inmates really have. So watch that Susan Smith story. Check out both books I mentioned. Be careful. Say no. No is your favorite word as a correction officer. No. Sometimes you put an adjective in front of there like hell no. Or some other words in front of the no. Absolutely no. No. Walk away. Do not let that conversation go. Be safe. Be smart.